310. Right, so, long little duck, number two. 17.3, Welcome to the channel. Today we are here outside the Ling House in Xi'an to drive this, the brand new Wuling Bingo. Now this little splodge of curves is the fourth car on Wuling's global small electric vehicle architecture, which also underpins the Mini, the Nano and the Air, which you might be able to see over my shoulder over there. Just like the Air before it, this car has a subtle clue to tell you about Wuling's plans for it. This logo here in silver tells you this is a global car, which means that it is going to be exported. We don't know exactly which markets it will go to yet, but chances are it's going to be in Asia. So Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, you're probably going to get this car pretty soon. Now at this point, I would normally start to pick apart the design of the bingo, but as you can see, there's not really a lot to talk about. What we do get are these big round headlamps, very cute, with these quite cool daytime running lights in there. Other than that, all we've got is some gentle sculpting here at the front, a rounded front end, and a little bit of ventilation down there at the bottom for the motors. So I'll come around the side instead. Around the side here, you will see that we do have a black roof. So you do get two-tone body on this. We also have our DC fast charger port in here. Our AC slow charger is on the other wing over there. Down here, we've got 15 inch steel wheels. These do come with these pretty funky little wheel trims on them. And as well, they've kept everything pretty simple, just gentle sculpting down the side. We do have standard door handles because of course these are cheaper than pop-out ones. Cute little mirrors and a very, very rounded shape and a bit of chrome down there as well. Well, let's go and check out the back. Now, as we come to the rear, the first thing to point out, of course, five doors, making this the most practical small wooling that there is available. Now, that jelly mold styling from the front, of course, very much continues at the back. We have very round lights, and actually, we also have the same light signature here in the back as we do in the front. And there are a few flourishes. We do get a bit of chrome here across the base of the C-pillar in the rear window and down here in the lower bumper. But overall, it's very squat, very rounded, and we quite like that. If we open up the trunk here, we'll have actually 310 litres of space in here. It's about 310 more than you get in a Wuling Mini and actually about 30 more than you get in a Volkswagen Polo. So we've got the makings of a very practical car here. I mean, look how deep that is. It's incredibly deep. Now, if you want a bit more space, you can flip down the rear seats. They fall down 50-50, and then you get up to 790 litres of space. So it's a really big, very practical car. So, question is, is it practical and spacious inside? Let's go and find out. Inside, we have an interior of beautiful simplicity with a pretty classic look, and it does feel actually fairly premium for a Wuling. We've got some fake leather up there on the dashboard, which looks quite cool. And within that, we have this sort of plastic island where our two 10.5 inch screens sit. On the cheaper models, you don't get the second screen. Directly ahead of us, we've got our driving function screen. You can't play with that one. That one just gives you all the information that you would expect. Out here on the right side, we get a system running on Ling OS, which is Wuling's in-house developed operating system. And I wouldn't say it's super quick, but it actually runs perfectly adequately. Get all the things on there that you'll possibly need. You've got your maps in here as well. If you swipe up from the bottom, you've also got your ventilation, which you can turn on and off. And you've got music in there and you can do Bluetooth and USB and all those things as well. So that is really cool. Very cool system. If you prefer your ventilation controls to be manual, you do still get those here. The exact same ones as you'll find in the other Wuling models, and they work totally fine. They actually feel reasonable quality as well. So why change something if it isn't broke? On the steering wheel here, we do get buttons as well. Unusual on a Wuling. It's the exact same steering wheel as you'll find in the Wuling Air, which means on the left side here, we get cruise control. That's cool. You can control that here. And on the right side, you get, of course, controls for your radio and things like that. The steering wheel itself is manually adjustable, but only for rake. So, boo, never mind. Down here in the center, we get our rotational dial for our drive selector. We do get a park function in here, so we don't have a handbrake as we do in other Wuling models. That's an improvement. So there's an electronic parking brake there. 
We also get a pocket here for dropping your phone into. And you've also got a pair of cup holders and one for the rear as well. Underneath, we do still get the same hooks that you get on some of the previous cars and a pair of USBs. And we also get a glove box as well. Only a small one, but it's cool to have it. Overall cabin ambience does feel quite premium. So we do get this sort of fake leather here on the chairs. They are more styled than those in the Wuling Mini, but they are certainly better and more supportive. You do get six way electronic adjustability here in the front, so you can go forwards and backwards, up and down and change the rake as well. The passenger seat is fully manual. That sort of fake leather extends here into the doors, which are quite cool. And we do get four electric windows, which is great, as well as electrically adjustable mirrors. And on the higher versions, you do get four speakers. They are in the bottom of the doors and in the bottom of the rear doors as well. So let's go and check out the back. For once in the back of a Wuling, you don't have to climb around the front seat. You can simply enter through the door. So entry is nice and easy. And once you're in, actually, there's a decent amount of room here. Decent amount of knee room, decent amount of headroom. The only thing we're lacking there is a little bit of foot room because the front chair is on the lowest setting, but otherwise it's okay. You're not gonna worry about shoulder room either because this is only a four seater. There's only belts for four. So nobody's gonna be sat here. You also get Isofix mountains in here, of course, for your child seats. You get electric windows, as I mentioned earlier one cup holder that you're gonna to have to fight over, a bit of space in the back of the front seat and in the doors as well. And of course these chairs fold 50-50. You do get an adjustable headrest, which is cool. So you get a bit of support as well. Although the chances are your head, if you're taller, is probably gonna be resting more on the roof than it is on the headrest. But overall, pretty decent, pretty spacious in the back. Okay, so we don't have a massive amount of time with the bingo to get used to everything about it, but I will try and give you as full a picture as I can of what the car is like to drive. Now, I'll start with the seating position because I do feel like we are sat quite high up, actually. This is the seat in the lowest position. We do feel quite high up. I have to say, though, the visibility is excellent. You can see all around. There's no blockages anywhere. I think the only the seat pillar, which is fairly chunky, is blocking our visibility. But other than that, it's okay. I would say that the seating position is slightly weird. The pedals are quite far off to the right-hand side, as they are in the Wuling Mini and in the Air EV as well. So we are slightly skewed in terms of our driving position, but the steering wheel is totally fine. As I mentioned earlier, this is only rake adjustable, so it's not reach adjustable, but it doesn't feel too far away, actually, with the seat in this sort of more upright position. Now, of course, the Bingo is not supposed to be a racing car by any sense, but overall, performance is fine. I wouldn't say the acceleration is particularly quick, although if you put it in sport mode, it does pick up the zip a little bit more. There are two versions of this car, so you get both of them are front motored. The smaller version is a 30 kilowatt motor, about 40 horsepower, 110 newton meters of torque. The larger version, which we have, is the 50 kilowatt motor. It's about 67 horsepower, 150 newton meters of torque. Top speed is 100 kilometers per hour. I know a lot of people ask that in our Geely Panda video, so it's good to actually get that feedback from you guys. Thank you very much. So yeah, top speed, 100 kilometers per hour, about 62 miles per hour. So again, it is very much a city-focused car. Handling, well, of course, it's not a racing car, so we're not expecting it to be super quick or super super dynamic. I would say that it's a little bit choppier over the, over the worst surfaces, but we don't get any air suspension or anything in this car. So again, it's perfectly adequate, I would say, for most city driving. I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. We're certainly fine in here. Steering is also very direct. Now, there is a little bit of body roll. You can feel that even at slow speeds. But again, not overly bad. And considering the, the chassis that we're based on here, we're not expecting anything more than that. It is totally adequate for what it's made for. Now, as I mentioned before, you get those two different size motors. They also equate to the size of battery that you get. So you get a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery in the small motor versions. That's the 30 kilowatt motor versions and it's about 31.9 kilowatt hour battery, I believe, for the larger version. That will give you, the smaller, smaller battery gives you a range of 202 kilometers, and the miles are below, and the larger battery gives you a range of 333, which is actually not that bad, not bad at all for a city car of this size, and certainly perfectly adequate for all the journeys that you're ever gonna wanna make in a Wuling Bingo. It's pretty dynamic actually to drive. Actually, it is quite sprightly in sport mode, more so than I thought it was. They'll put it back into eco mode. 
In terms of dimension, this car comes in at just under four meters long, which makes it about 10 centimeters shorter than a Volkswagen Polo or a Ford Fiesta, for example, comparable sized cars. But it does have a longer wheelbase than both of those at 2.56 meters long. So Wheeling actually claimed that it is the class leading wheelbase in this class. And it does make for a very spacious interior, as I talked about earlier. And of course, having the wheels out in the corners does also make for quite fun handling at the same time and also quite easy to drive around town as well. The cheapest version of the Bingo starts at just 59,800 RMB, which honestly is an absolute bargain. That is for the smaller motor and the smaller battery. There are two versions with that option. There are three versions with the larger motor and the larger battery. They start at 73,800 RMB and rise to 83,800 RMB which honestly is an absolute bargain. Larger versions of the Bingo with the, the big battery and the big motor do come with some element of DC fast charging as well. Now we don't have any specific numbers on that other than to say it will charge from 30 to 80% in about 35 minutes. Based on the experience and the size of the battery in the Geely Panda, I would say that it's probably gonna be somewhere between 17 to 20 kilowatts of fast charging. So maybe not quite as quick as the fast charging that you can get in the higher versions of the Panda, but it will be adequate because most people will be parking up at a shopping mall or something in a car like this. So you're gonna charge it no problem. But yeah, it's a really cool car. It's fun to drive. It's fun to look at. Loads of space, loads of space in the back, as we said earlier. And what great value, it's incredible. So that's it for our review of the Wuling Bingo. And what do we think about it? Well, honestly, value for money, excellent. Wuling are definitely on to another winner with this car. If you need a car with a bit more space in it or a bit more range for your family that can go maybe a bit further than a Wuling Mini or a Geely Panda Mini, this car could definitely be the one for you. Up to 333 kilometers of range, only 83,900 RMB for the most expensive version of this with all the kit inside and all the space. It is a really good car. And of course, it's going abroad as well. So we look forward to seeing this in other countries around the world as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and we will see you next time.